Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Angular with Jeepster. First, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, who here knows Angular? Okay, good. And the Jeepster? Oh, okay, nice. Um, I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is uh, William. I work at uh, Ipro Technology as a full stack consultant. Uh, I will be freelance uh, next week. Um, uh, I'm, the G I'm the stream leader on the Angular part for the Jeepster project. I'm part of the core uh, team contribution. And I'm a big fan of uh, JavaScript and its uh, ecosystem, including, of course, uh, TypeScript. Uh, so what is uh, Jeepster? Jeepster is an, an application generator, so we can generate for you uh, an Angular React of UGS application with a backend uh, with a Spring Boot. Uh, who here does uh, some Java code? Okay, so it's a Java backend, so I'm not going to talk a lot about this, don't worry. But uh, basically, we manage for you the authentication, uh, the multiple languages, uh, entities, um, deployments, microservices, and the continuous integration and continuous deployments. Um, I'm going to do the focus on the front-end stack because we are at the TypeScript meetup. Uh, we have the same stack uh, for the three frameworks, uh, React, Angular, R, and uh, Vue.js. So for the build system, we use Webpack. Uh, we don't use the CLIs. Uh, we don't use the Angular CLI. We don't use the Vue CLI. And we don't use uh, Create React App, I think that's the name. Um, we did our own Webpack configuration because we wanted to customize it uh, to do some performance uh, tuning. Uh, and the uh, CLI uh, doesn't yet allow that, so we, we prefer to go this way. Uh, we, of course, use TypeScript uh, for the three frameworks. Uh, Angular has the best uh, support for now, of course. And for the unit test, we use Jest. And for the styling, we use uh, SAS. So uh, some focus on uh, TypeScript. Uh, so as I said, uh, the three frameworks are all written in TypeScript. And uh, one, uh, one new thing we had uh, pretty recently was the strict mode uh, who was enabled uh, on Angular. I will explain it uh, after. So let's go for a demo. Uh, I have not the same skills as the previous speaker, so I will code with my two hands. Okay. Good. Can you hear me good? No? No? Better? Okay. Um, so I am uh, on um, an empty uh, folder. I'm going to tell, uh, maybe I can uh, zoom. Yep. Spoiler. Uh, that's better? Bigger? <laughs> okay. So, uh, basically, Jeepster is a command line. Uh, you can install it with the NPM, uh, Homebrew, uh, Chocolaté on Windows, and uh, I think that's it, but I think that's enough. So uh, I call it by using the Jeepster command, and I'm just going to add uh, a skip check command to avoid uh, some network calls, uh, because the network is pretty slow on my uh, phone. So now uh, Jeepster is going to tell me some questions, ask me some questions about uh, what I want to do. So uh, as I told you, uh, we support different architectures, uh, monolithic or microservices. Uh, for now, we will go to the monolithic as is the simplest way. We only deploy one application and not uh, a, a more complex arch architecture. Uh, we can customize the name of the application, the Java package. Uh, the Jeepster reg registry is, an, uh, is a side application. Uh, um, it's more useful uh, for uh, the um, microservices uh, architecture. Uh, when you want to monitor and scale uh, the whole microservices uh, architecture. Sorry. So for this simple example, we won't use it. 
the authentication, uh, we have three types, uh, JWT, HTTP, uh, OO2, uh, with a key clock, which is uh, open source, and Okta, which is a uh, proprietary, uh, I think. So we will let's use JWT. Uh, the type of database, so we support both uh, relational databases and uh, uh, NoSQL no uh, databases. Uh, let's go with SQL. Um, let's use Postgre. Uh, for development to prevent from starting like a Docker file or uh, a Docker container or anything while developing, uh, we, we ask you if you want to start with an e-memory or a disk-based application, which will start when you run your server so you don't have to run your Docker uh, before starting your application. Um, so let's go with that. Uh, Spring cache, we don't care. Same, it's Java thing. Um, uh, these options are some other technologies that didn't fit, like uh, these are no yes, no questions. The, these are various technologies that we integrated. So we can use uh, Elasticsearch to do some search. So we will generate, if you check this option, uh, we will generate for you both a search bar on the front end side and uh, we will do the indexation uh, on the back end side and uh, we give you the data from the front end to the back end. Uh, you can do WebSockets, uh, Kafka and uh, OpenAPI to generate from an OpenAPI open file, which is the new name of uh, Swagger. So basically you import your Swagger file and it will generate uh, the Java code and the front end code for you. And then you have the framework. You can see there is no uh, Vue.js yet. Uh, because it's in, uh, for now it's, a, it's in um, a blueprint. It's uh, like a, an extension of the generator because it's still a work in progress, but it will be soonly uh, merged into the main generator. Uh, you can also choose, by the way, to have no client at all. Uh, you can use also uh, a Boostwatch theme uh, because we use Bootstrap for all the styling parts. We don't use yet, we don't use yet uh, Angular material. Uh, we, we will maybe soon uh, propose it if you want, but for now, people seem happy with Bootstrap, so we, we keep it. And so you can use a custom team if you want. I will go with the default one. Uh, if you want to support multiple languages, you have a default one, which is, will be the fallback if you, if you don't um, uh, give the translation for uh, another language, this one will be the default fallback. So it will be the English and let's French and uh, I don't know Greek, Hindi. <laughs> and um, we give you also, we generate also, also some uh, unit tests with JUnit and Jest. JUnit for the Java part and Jest for the front end part. But you can also uh, do some performance testing with uh, Gatling. Uh, you can, um, uh, you do some um, functional testing on your APIs with Cucumber, and you can do some end-to-end -end testing with uh, Protractor. And then we have a marketplace, but I will talk to you after <laughs> about this. So now it will generate some files, uh, quite a lot, and as NPM install is going to take uh, like uh, five hours, um, I already generated an application. I, I, I uh, I did the same thing like uh, an hour ago, just to show you uh, the results. So I started my application using Maven, and then uh, you will get this. So it's uh, the basic application, really the, 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 the blank one. You already have, so the, it's not the same languages I chose, but you have the different languages. You have the authentication, admin, admin. And then once you are logged as an admin, you have various uh, front-end application, uh, front-end pages, like uh, user management, uh, metrics of your Java application of your web server, like the request, the time of each request. Uh, you can have also uh, the, the, the API using Swagger. So you have uh, all the, the API, so you can try your API. Uh, you have a, a lot of things. Uh, it's not the point of this meetup to show you all the pages, but you have uh, various information about your uh, application. And you have the, auto, the, the authentication which is working uh, as always. 
once uh, we generated uh, a simple web app, uh, what we want to do is to generate uh, some entities. So to generate entities, you have two choices. Yeah, it's still installing, so let's switch. Uh, you have uh, sub comments on the jipster, so you can do jipster entity uh, foo. And then we will start, we will start asking you if, uh, if you want a relationship, uh, what uh, are the fields of your entity, et cetera. So it's quite long if you have, if you have like five or six entities or more, it can be quite long. So we decided to, a long time ago, to do a, a, a domain language, which is called Jeepster Domain Language, JDL, uh, to design uh, your, uh, your maybe it's like a UML uh, schema, and then you import it, and we will generate uh, all the, uh, the API endpoints and the front-end code for you. So I already imported on uh, some tool we have, it's the JDL Studio, uh, which allows you to uh, uh, write the JDL code. Maybe. Is that okay? You can see it? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so you can write it and it will, on the side, you will have the, the visualization, the visualization of your model. So I, I copy pasted uh, a model from our uh, CI uh, to test uh, all our different cases, etc. So that's the basic application we always generate when there is a pull request or etc. So it's basically a bank account system, very basic. Uh, you can see if I, re I, I just put the, 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 my entities uh, with the fields, uh, the types, of course. Uh, these are Java types. Uh, you can add some uh, validation. The validation will be done on both uh, the backend and on the front end. Uh, you can add enumerations, and at the end, you will have the relationships if you want uh, one to one, one to many, many to many, etc. And you will see the results here. <coughs> Once you finished uh, the design of your uh, uh, model, you can download by clicking here the JDI file. And then you, you will just have to type the commands uh, import GDL uh, with the paths of your uh, file. So let's do this. I think it will work even, even if it's still installing. Maybe with, with Yarn it, will, it was faster. By the way, you can run it with Yarn. Uh, we have a flag, a gipster, dash dash Yarn. You can run it with Yarn. I don't have on my machine, so. I didn't need the skip checks option. So, so now he's scanning my, my file. So you can see that uh, he detected all the, um, all the entities. And now he will write some files and uh, erase some wide because basically Liquibase is the database. So he, he will have to add some tables on the database. So we, he, he, will have to up, he will have to update the database. So that's why he's asking me to overwrite this file. So let's go and overwrite everything. Again, uh, I cheated. So the application I showed you has already all the model, but it's to gain time. It's not. Oh, it's finished. Oh, no. Oh, because, yeah, we ran a, a script after, and uh, as the NPM installation hasn't finished. So yeah, let's keep it. So I have the, the very same JDL file imported, and we can see uh, I have uh, one menu per entity, and it's basically uh, um, just a, a crude uh, interface, so I can, uh, I can see my entities. And yes, also I forgot, by default, we generate some data, uh, some dumb, uh, dummy data, um, by using a library called Faker.js. Uh, so it will detect the, um, the name of your entities. For example, if I go to employee, it will detect that uh, my name by my field is first name, so it will generate uh, real data, like some name, some email. So it's quite nice for the demo. And uh, it's uh, only in development. Of course, we don't want to generate uh, uh, data in production uh, for you. And uh, so I can see my uh, entities uh, generated. I can uh, view it. <coughs> I can uh, edit it if I want. Uh, I have a, a relationship between uh, my employee and my manager. I can change it if I want. 
uh, I don't know what I've done. Yeah, I changed the manager here. So yeah, it's, it's basically a, a really basic, but it's a, it's a good start. And I think it's, the, it's a code that we will always write. Uh, it's not the most interesting code we write. So uh, we think it's better to automate it using uh, clean code with a G unit test, just test, uh, basic front end pages. And then you can start working on uh, your, what you, what you are paid for is bringing um, business value uh, on your application. So let's see uh, first the code which is which was generated. So you have. Uh, do you prefer the dark team or the? This good. Okay. Uh, yep. That's okay. So uh, we have various uh, configuration files. Uh, we give you also a prettier. I don't uh, who here use prettier to format the code. So we give you this uh, with the configuration, uh, with the commit uh, hook that we format your code uh, instantly. Uh, we have also the ASLint file already configured for you. And we still have TSLint. I know TSLint has been deprecated, but uh, for the Angular uh, users, uh, we still have to use TSLint because uh, some uh, Angular specific rules uh, has not been yet um, uh, switched to uh, ESLint. So we still have this one tslint.json file, but once uh, Colizer will be uh, switched to, we, we switch to ESLint, we will, uh, we can remove this. Um, so the source code will be on the source main uh, folder and the front end code, which interests us today is under the web app uh, folder. So on the app, you have the, all the TypeScript uh, code or the Angular code. On the contents, you will have the style, uh, the images, if you want. On the A, international, internationalization folder, uh, you will have the, all the JSON file we use, we generated to, uh, if you want to change it. And uh, then you have the index.html. And we also uh, provide you the, the front end application is already a PWA. So it already works uh, offline. Uh, I didn't try if the, we, we cached the API calls, but at least the application login uh, is working. <coughs> um, so that's it about the app. After that, it's a pretty basic Angular application. So let's talk about the strict mode. You can see that here it's enabled on the TS config file, yep, it's here. So strict mode is a TypeScript compiler option, uh, which enable, uh, oh, I think, yeah, which enable a following option, uh, no implicit any, no implicit this, etc. You can see it there. Uh, for me, the most uh, interesting uh, rules are uh, the no implicit any one, the strict null checks, and the strict property uh, initialization. Uh, because they force developers to type uh, their code and to always check if uh, a value returned from a function or from maybe a, yeah, from a function is uh, really defined before accessing it. So let's show it with some basic example. So about the no implicit any, this rule is pretty basic. I can take code like I'm the, on the uh, on an Angular service. And here, if I omit to type uh, this parameter, uh, type skill will tell me, yeah, uh, this type is uh, implicitly any. So you have to type it. Of course, I can be lazy and do that. And it will work. It, it doesn't uh, prevent us from uh, doing, uh, from putting some any's in our type skill code. But at least it will tell you if you don't, if you have uh, it uh, implicitly. So let's pull it back. Um, about the strict null checks, uh, it's quite interesting if you do something about that, like uh, uh, you do an array, then you you try to find something in it. All right, and then 
you want to access, let, let's imagine it's an object, and then you want to access, oh, what? Okay, <laughs> new features. And um, yeah, now he will tell me that as the find is not a, sure to return a number from my array, it will tell me that uh, this value is possibly undefined. So you, I have to check before with like an if or with a new operator from uh, TypeScript 3.7, I think. But we don't support it yet because Angular don't support it yet. So, um, <laughs> and uh, if you want to force it, if you are sure that your value is not null, you can use the strict uh, non-null assertion operator, which is the exclamation mark. I discovered it quite recently, and I was quite surprised. But by using this, you tell TypeScript before you were saying that my object is possibly undefined. Now it's not. And the strict property initialization, initialization finally is on a, a class. So I, I just have to find a model on my entity, I think. Yep, yep. Uh, 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 yeah. So basically here, if I declare uh, a field on a class, <coughs> to tell me that there is an issue because I didn't either uh, initialize it in my constructor and uh, didn't uh, initialize it uh, uh, in line like doing this. So again, if you are not happy with this, you can, you can do that. It's to force you, uh, uh, this rule will help you to check if there are some unused uh, uh, fields on a class, for instance. Um, I think that's it for me. Thanks. Any questions? Okay. I have one. Thanks. No, no, no. I have oh, one. Ah, you have one. Okay. Um, you told us about this. Um, yep. What's the test command uh, of the project? NPM test. Yes, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, it, it launched a test under the hood, or is it uh, the Karma Jasmine like uh, an Angular? No, it just, it's just. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we use just. Uh, we used, uh, like two years ago, uh, Karma Jasmine. Okay. Uh, then we introduced React, and uh, as just is the common solution, and uh, I tried just on the Angular application, it was pretty much faster than Karma Jasmine, so we, we decided to put Jest on both uh, Angular and React. Second question. <laughs> yeah. I saw an AOT uh, test config, but does yep. uh, the template support uh, AOT? Yep. Yeah, we support AOT and we support the new strict mode uh, on the Angular 9. I already tried it, so we are pretty ready to use uh, IV compiler even. It, uh, it already works with uh, IV. And then last question. Yep. Um, is the, the OpenSPI spec valid? Meaning that uh, do you generate a specific client for for the API? From the a specific client for the API? Yes, because uh, do you read uh, Swagger.json um, when you import it? Yes. Uh, how are the DTO generated? Your class? Ah no, uh, class we uh, we generate uh, the all the code from the JDI file uh, I showed you. We don't do uh, special checks about Swagger. The I think the Swagger is from the either some annotation on the Java code. I think I'm not an expert on this, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <clears throat> is it possible to uh, launch the command line utility uh, afterwards to change uh, language or database from backend? Um, no, if you have to make a new project and yeah. migrate. Uh, you, you can upgrade uh, with the, the same stack uh, there is some way to do it, but it's quite difficult. Uh, the way we, we recommend to avoid uh, issues with upgrading, if you want to upgrade, uh, like when you release new versions, it's, it's to do inheritance. You inherit uh, our classes, uh, our models, and everything. So you try to avoid uh, touching the generated code. Uh, for the front end, it will be pretty much impossible. Uh, but for the back end, it's what we, we, we recommend. Uh, otherwise, uh, you have to do another project with another technologies. We don't uh, provide the way of switching uh, uh, databases. It will be too complex for us. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much.